Hello everyone, this is my three-part analytic uh, summary video <clears throat> and I hope to uh, make it as clear as possible for you. Uh, I know we did uh, the creating the rubric which the purpose of that was to get us to discuss what quality looks like. Uh, it also gave me a, a, a reminder that I need to revise the rubric but I can't revise it now. Uh, and some of you pointed out some of the things wrong because some of you took the, my rubric and, and made it into yours, which, you know, it's okay, but uh, uh, there were some things wrong with my, my rubric, which um, I'll talk about. Um, I first, I wanted to give you the rationale for this culminating activity. After taking this course, you should realize that assessment is not just something done at the end of a unit, a semester, or a year, but it's a valuable tool that if used appro appropriately can enhance learning. While this activity may be a bit dissimilar to what happens in a classroom, it is the practice for creating an assessment aligned with clear learning targets and then analyzing the results to inform your teaching. So in the first part, um, you're, you need to create a chart, a table, a graphic, and I have, uh, this is the template that you should have uh, downloaded a long time ago. <laughs> um, you can see, let me get it a little larger here. Um, you can see that the first part is a graphic that, uh, and it's <laughs> uh, charting results. So, in your first part, it's basically going to be a chart. So what you should do is you hit the insert uh, and insert a picture. So you, you should take a screenshot of the table that you create. Now, what does that table look like? If you go into the upload page, this is the three-part analytic upload page where you'll upload your um, final um, analysis you can see that there are two links here. One is a graphic template. That's the table I created. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, this is what mine looks like. I, I put um, any kind of answers in here just to give you an idea. It's color coded. It's, it, you can see by lear uh, learning target um, how it looks, how people have scored. And, and it really makes the analysis better. Down here, I, di I did a little chart by question type. Now, you could also build that in somewhere in this table here. And I'll show you a uh, Excel spreadsheet that Debbie Wong from my 64020 class created. Um, here again is uh, the names, the overall, <coughs> excuse me, the overall score. And you can see here are the question answers. Um, this is, and, and Debbie mixed up her uh, question types in the, her learning targets. So she didn't have all learning targets. LT1 um, is matching. LT2 is fill in. She mixed them up. And so you can see what she did here. Again, she color coded it to show um, which targets go with which questions. Um, you can see that the, the blue is correct, red is incorrect. So right away you might make a, uh, an overall picture of results is everybody got a 98 or 100 and George Harrison here <clears throat> got a 75, God rest his soul. Um, so <clears throat> basically that's because he didn't answer all these questions down here at the end. So um, that's the first thing. You want, to you, want to, you want a graphic that creates an overall picture. Of, of how your people, how your candidates did on your um, test. You want, you have a score, uh, everybody gets a score so you can see right away how the whole class did. Um, you can just look at this and see almost everybody did well because there's, it's all blue. <laughs> uh, and all blue means they're all correct. So one, one of the things you might interpret from this is that, hey, my test was too damn easy. <laughs> Um, so that that's an interpretation you can make. So that's that's one of the analysis you can you can do. Um, where did they get pr problems wrong? Oh, look at they got uh, fill in the blank. Um, they 
there's a misconception about between uh, or misunderstanding between quantitative patterns and qualitative patterns. So those are are ways that you can use your graphic. So you don't really have to say a lot about your your graph or your chart or your table. Um, so you just have to have one and um, you can again you can take a um, screenshot uh, of it. So I will do that for mine. Uh, that's the rubric. So you, you click on your uh, snipping tool, which is right here. I'm going to X out of it and open it again. So you hit new, and then you just uh, highlight your your um, chart, and then you have a picture. So you can save it. You save it, and then when you go to put it in your Word document, you can just go insert um, picture here here's insert pictures it'll take me to probably to my pictures yeah there they are I'm gonna go in and I know where I saved that I'm gonna go into my course and I'm gonna go into handouts I'm gonna go into exemplars and rubrics TPAS and I believe I have a sample, there's my sample TPS chart. And there it is. So that's really all you need to do for charting results. That's enough. Um, and then part two, uh, analysis of results to inform teaching. This is where you have to do some writing, some citations, some APA, next steps. Um, support your comments with uh, evidence from the chart and you also support it with evidence from our readings, from uh, any of the texts that we've used. So those are the first two parts. Now, your, your analysis of results also has to inform your teaching. Um, do you, do you reteach? Am I going to have to put some kids in small groups as I move on? Or am I going to move on with everybody? Or am I going to have to do some individualization? Uh, or am I going to recommend somebody for special ed? I don't know how you would, you would be able to get that from one assessment. So I strike that. Strike that I said that. <laughs> uh, okay. So I just want the, the exemplars that I have uh, are not exemplars that we're going to do. This first part um, is all combined. So uh, it's part one and two here are going to be your part two. You're going to analyze um, the responses, analyze your test takers. And your third part is going to be the um, part on what did you learn? Three insights. So um, this person has several, used a, a lot of uh, um, citations, even though she's used wrong citations. This should be Popham 2000 and uh, 17. Uh, then <clears throat> this period should be uh, eliminated. The period was at the end of the sentence, etc., etc. But if you've been looking at your uploads of your initial posts, I've been giving APA feedback all semester. So if you're making mistakes on this, shame on you. Um, but uh, th this is uh, the third part. Will be what did I learn from? this whole process. And I'm, I, I, I reminded you during the, at the start of the process and in the middle of it that you should be taking notes on what you struggled with, what was difficult, what, what uh, aha moments did I, did I have. So that's what this uh, third section should look, look like with, with uh, at least three insights. You can do more, um, but you have to have citations. If I don't see citations and you're just then you're just BSing, um, and it may be good stuff, but it's got to be su supported. Each paragraph you should have one insight and have it supported with evidence from uh, from Popham, from Chapui and Stiggins, from Clay. Um, is is this a trick question? Uh, and also from Brookhart, who wrote an article about uh, so selected response tests and making reasoning questions so all right that's uh 
it fairly in a nutshell. I'm, I'm kind of going off uh, script here. Um, but um, I, I, I wanted to uh, talk about um, those of you who may have issues because people didn't take your revised test. Um, in the last, in the mid session uh, module 10 uh, teaching memo, I reminded everyone that you have to, if you don't have five test results, then you got to email people in your group. And most people are pretty good about uh, taking them if you let them know. Or you can email me and, and um, I will um, hound them. <laughs> So you can see um, that uh, I've mentioned Popham, Chapuin, Stiggins, and Clay. Those are all uh, resources that I expect you to um, to have in your... So let, let me just take a, a look at the rubric, um, which is, again, um, you can see that for the chart, it just, it just needs to um, indicates the parts of the assessment are aligned with the learning targets. It's, so you can see that the chart that I I made, um, I can tell what's aligned with the learning target. So this would get a four or a three um, in that category. And, and really that's the only thing it really has to do. Now um, my next semester's rubric will have, over, has to have overall results, has to um, show correct and incorrect answers, um, has to have uh, percentages by question type. Um, so that's all going to change and I can't, I couldn't change the rubric now because once it's in the syllabus um, it's got to stay. So we have to live with that. Um, so that's all your chart really has to have. Chart table or graph um, shows that um, questions are aligned with learning targets. Um, your uh, analysis of results to inform teaching uh, has to be detailed description, has to be uh, given supported by the chart, uh, and, and you have to talk about target mastery, um, next steps for instruction, uh, and support those next steps with evidence. So that's a three. And for the part three, again, you have to have three insights, and they, have, and they all have to be supported with citations from the reading. So that's pretty simple. You know, what are three big ideas that you took away from the process? And again, the mechanics in here, I don't know why I did this. Um, you should have correct APA format and no grammatical or typographical errors. You also should have correct spelling. This should have, this should have APA spelling and grammar in it, and then one of the criteria is missing. I don't know why I put the graph formatted, because that's a repeat of what's going on up here. So, so that is my creating the three-part analytic summary um, video in my uh, description of what I expect and I hope it's helpful.